Cryptocurrency is the golden fucking key to unlock your cage of financial slavery, people. Welcome to the Crypto Rodeo Show. I have been in the crypto space for a long time. I remember the old Mt. Gox days and how horrible that was for Bitcoin and crypto. But never did I think that I would uncover a white paper from 1996 about a cryptocurrency called eCash. Not only that, but its author is the freaking NSA. I have not heard of a single soul that has mentioned this on Twitter, Reddit, 4chan, nothing. It's completely radio silent. Either people know about it and don't want to talk about it, or it is genuinely hidden from the masses, and me, some dude in a hat, has uncovered this document from the deep dark depths of the internet hell. This white paper is supposed to uh, supposed to be created by the NSA. It basically describes what Bitcoin was supposed to be. And what I mean by that is Bitcoin today isn't what Satoshi Nakamoto wanted. <clears throat> it was supposed to be a peer-to-peer -peer currency, you know, something you would use to buy things with, a literal currency. Instead, it is transformed into some type of speculative vehicle being manipulated by rich people to siphon more money out of poor, naive, and desperate millionaire, desperate wannabe millionaires. We're not dying! Fuck Elon! Yeah. Fuck Elon! Let's look at this white paper. Here... It has the date it was released, which is October 31st, 1996, which just so happens to be the same date Satoshi Nakabuthole released his white paper, October 31st, 2008. Coincidence? Maybe. Doubt it. Furthermore, if you look at the address we find that it leads to a building in Washington. This building just so happens to house one of the world's biggest asset management companies, the Carlyle Group, known for its conquest of several businesses such as Hertz, and Carlyle's also involved with military equipment as well. You know, war. Now you're probably wondering, what does this have to do with crypto? Well, everything, because this white paper was released by the NSA from the address where the world's biggest asset company runs out of assets. They manage assets like coins, tokens, Bitcoin, and it doesn't stop there. The Carlyle Group was also involved with some sketchy 9-11 business ordeal exposed by that Michael Moore guy from Fahrenheit 911. Remember, this paper was released in 1996, so they had time to figure out what they were going to do. The government is always 10, 20, maybe 30 years ahead when it comes to releasing technology. They get the good stuff, we get the crumbs. But in time, they release the technology to us. Like here, here is your morsel of dial-up internet. Meanwhile, they're the ones going fiber optic before anyone else did. Getting back to this white paper, though, the meat and potatoes of this white paper is mostly technical mumbo jumbo that resembles Bitcoin to a T. But there is one section that really captures my attention and furrows my brow. The security portion. Most people don't know that Bitcoin and its SHA2 algorithm was literally created by the NSA. They admit it. Here is a Coindesk article that gives you the breakdown how Bitcoin uses the SHA technology implemented by the NSA for cryptographical cryptographic security. Basically, it's what makes Bitcoin secure and ensures nobody can steal your coins. Or so they say. So ask yourself, if you create the world's most advanced cryptographic security system, then you would also create the most advanced crypto cracking system as well. You wouldn't just put a lock on your front door and 
not have a key to your house, right? Of course you'll have a key to your house. So the NSA or the government have the ability to crack into wallets at their leisure. I mean, honestly, if you think about it. There's no way they're going to create the most secure technology and not be able to crack it. They have to. They have to. But back to the white paper. At least the security portion of this white paper. Here it talks about the traceability of eCash, a.k.a. Bitcoin. Remember, this is 1996. This is real. It says the anonymity properties of electronic cash pose several law enforcement problems because they prevent withdrawals and deposits from being linked to each other. We explained in the previous sections how this prevents detection from forged coins. Look at that. In 1996, they literally call, called cryptocurrencies coins. They call them coins. Anonymity also makes it difficult to detect money laundering and tax evasion because there is no way to link the payer and the payee. Finally, electronic cash paves the way for new versions of old crimes, such as kidnapping and blackmail, where money drops can now be carried out safely from the criminal's home computer. Blackmail. Sounds familiar. Remember the meat shortages? Because there was a ransomware hacker attack wanting payment in Bitcoin to restore services? Well, they're kind of dumb for using a uh, wanting payment in a, in a coin that's literally traceable on the blockchain. But as we're aware now, it's also tra traceable by the government as well. Since, you know, the NSA created the very same technology they're using to launder and steal money with, so they have the power to gain access to their private keys. The FBI admit to gaining access to their wallets and take back portions of the Bitcoin from the hacker group. Now think about this. The FBI, when they went after these ransomware hackers, they said they were able to get the private key by implementing some Donnie Brasco type into their establishment. Forget about it. Like, oh, their Donnie Brasco guy got them the, the private keys. Please, spare me. We know you have access to it. Continuing on with the white paper, it says, One way to minimize these concerns, which is traceability concerns, is to require large transactions or large numbers of transactions in a given time period to be traceable. This would make it even more difficult to commit crimes involving large sums of cash. So it's just like whale alert. You know, on Twitter, when they say, oh, some dude's moving $17 trillion of BTC from one wallet to the next. Can you imagine the gas fees? It's the same thing. So they want to monitor that. And that's exactly what they're doing. The FBI, the CIA, the NSA, the government are literally watching everything. Finally, it says another way to minimize these concerns of traceability is to provide a mechanism to restore traceability under certain conditions, such as a court order. The FBI literally admit we went out and got a court order to be able to go into these wallets and take the money. You know, like a... Uh, like a document where they can just go in there, break down your doors, and do a search warrant. It's a search warrant. It's literally a search warrant for your wallet. Because they have access to your wallet. They created it. They created the technology. And they can access it anytime, anywhere, any place. So when people say that, you know, oh, it's decentralized, it's decentralized, it's not. I'm sorry, it's not. But to sum it all up, the NSA created 1996 eCash, then created the security algorithm SHA2 for it so they can have access to anything and everything using the cryptographic security system, then release it in 2008 under some rando dude, Satoshi Naka Butthole, who's blowing everybody's nips off because he's so smart. Which, by the way, Satoshi Nakamoto is a Japanese for Central Intelligence. 
which is also interesting. But here we are today, screaming, when Lambo? At the mercy of our corporate overlords that manipulate the market with one tweet at a time. Cryptocurrency is supposed to be a currency, but we're far from that. We're far from utilizing blockchain. Nobody's using block. Nobody. Nobody's using it. As the great McAfee says, cryptocurrency is the key to unlocking our financial freedom. But instead, we just want to get rich quick by exchanging it, which I get it. Listen, I'm not going to sit here and, and, and say that I'm not here to make money. Of course. But in the midst of me trying to make money, I've come across this white paper and it shocked me. Ah, <sighs> This white paper is in the description below if you want to check it out feel free to i think it's a good read it's literally pretty much bitcoin to the t uh, but thank you so much for watching and one last thing i'm not a financial advisor i'm just some dude in a hat good night